And we're live, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Mindset Podcast. This is your host, Alex Muir, helping you flex your mind, body, and soul. And we're having our repeat guest, David A. Specht, the author of Old Dogs, New Tricks, also a lifestyle hacker like myself, it's also a, an amazing podcast host with Keep This In Mind. And uh, David, welcome back to the show. Happy to have you on again. We got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to dig into. <laughs> I'm super stoked <laughs> to be here, my friend. I'm telling you. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you and I go back and forth, even off camera a lot, you know, just, just in, you know, random, random, uh, Facebook messages or random Facebook, uh, video chats here and there. And so it's like this conversation never ended. You know, we, I was on, I think about a year ago and we talked about a lot of things, mainly from the health standpoint, health coaching and, and life hacking as, as that goes. And like we've both said, a lot of life has happened since the last show. And, um, I won't say that I have changed my mindset, but I do believe a mindset can evolve over time. And some things that are like non-negotiables may not be so non-negotiable, you know, down the road when you start re resetting priorities. And I, and I think and I think the listeners will, will get a lot of good insight from that experience over the last year. So excited to be here. Absolutely. And one thing I wanted to talk, uh, ask you about was let, let, let's speak to the health the health okay. side of things um like in our last episode i don't know if i asked but is intermittent fasting a part of your kind of nutrition protocol do you utilize that as as a lever with your let's say your weight training your cardio and then your nutrition well um i'm a firm believer in what what, what my dentist used to tell me about toothpaste i asked him what was the best toothpaste and he said the one that you'll use every day I think that there are advantages to every type of um, health system, you know, short, short of, you know, starving yourself to death over, you know, a long period of time or taking something that just, you know, completely drains everything out of your body. So do I personally do intermittent fasting? That's the question. The answer is no. But here's the thing. That's because that's not what I learned. You know, we tend we tend to stick with what we've learned, you know. It's like uh, if you learned how to do math one way, you know, you do short math or maybe you do long division, you know, whatever you learned the first time is the thing that you kind of default back to. And for me, it wasn't intermittent fasting, but it was small meals throughout the day. So six times a day eating. Um, and again, I have seen some people be extremely successful over a long period of time with intermittent fasting. I have my wife has a cousin who does intermittent fasting and she's the same age as me and she's in the best shape of her life. So just because it's not what I choose to use, I choose to use something that works that. And when I say works for me, it has nothing to do with the system it has everything to do with my willingness to be consistent with the system. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense because um, I I'll, I'll, I'll admit as well. Like I tried intermittent fasting and I was really into it for a few years but the same thing, I'll drop things if I can't stay consistent with them, right? And that's what ended up happening. And if the problem is if you eat too large of a meal post fast, you're coming off your fast and then you just gorge because you're starving, right? Because usually what happens, your body, it's really hard on your digestion. And I actually had to go to the doctor because I'm someone that's already oh, wow. has has bad, you know, I can get indigestion and all that. So like yourself, six meals a day, smaller meals like all broken up throughout the day, that's always worked the best for me. And I've always stuck with that. So I've gone back to that and I feel better than ever. And yeah. And, and one of the things I'm learning and, and, you know, we talked about the, over the la the course of last year and off camera, you were talking about, uh, you've been following my story of going to the gym. When I began to try to incorporate some physical fitness, the nutrition side of things got a little more complicated for me. And the reason I say that is because I'm a simple guy, okay? I, you know, I'm not the guy that, that's walking through the grocery store reading every label to see how many net carbs there are in something or, or whatever. I'm like, you look, tell me what I can have. This is what I'll do, and I'll keep doing it. But once I started incorporating um, exercise, and I don't do heavy lifting. I'm 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 a, I'm a get in, get out, do 30 minutes, you know, on every Nautilus machine known to mankind kind of person. But what what I began to learn was, okay, I can't. I can't curtail. I can't go so low glycemic that that it causes me to be dizzy in the gym. Yeah. So, okay, let's let's yeah. incorporate some some protein. Let's incorporate some aminos. Okay, 
So you start doing that, right? Well, what happens on the day you can't go to the gym? Do you still take the protein? Do you still take the aminos? And what does that do to your overall? So, so it's a balancing act, right? It, yeah. and, it, and I'm still, you know, if, if you were to put side by side pictures right now, from the first time I was on the cast to the time that I'm on this time, you're going to see that I have filled out a little bit and it's not all muscle, but it's not all fat either. Yeah. yeah. So the, the balancing act for me as a, as a always going to be recovering food addict is going to be, okay, how far can I go without going too far? Yeah. What are the right things for me to, to, to put into my body? As, as I'm trying to attain these things and what can I do long-term, you know, when I, it, I'm going to make you laugh, but so this week, you know, as I was doing shoulder presses, all of a sudden I started hurting out here, but it wasn't muscle pain. It was joint pain. And I'm like, Oh Lord, 55 is hitting me hard. <laughs> you know, I, I cannot exercise my way to poor nutrition choices. Yeah. Yeah. And so for me, and again, I'm just being transparent here. And, you know, God does this to me all the time. He's like, you're going to tell on yourself because people need to hear it. I have not attained that balance yet. I'm about 25 pounds more than I was a year ago. Again, some of it's muscle. I, I, I can yeah. see definition yeah. taking place because yeah. I've been doing this for nearly six months. Yeah. But it's not all that. And so as I'm going through the journey of life, as long as I'm being intentional and I'm aware and I'm attempting and I'm trying to build those habits of health, then, then I am going to be able to do better than I would if I'm just going willy nilly through life. Um, one of the reasons you'll, if you if y'all follow me on, on any of the, the socials, I'm, I, I do reels every time I go to the gym and it's not the, Hey, look at me pumping. I am, I'm doing this now. No, I, I do a reel. <laughs> As I'm walking to the gym or from the car before I go to the gym, you're like, David, why do you do that? Because I hate the treadmill so much that I caption and upload my reel while I'm on the treadmill to make me forget what I'm doing. That's just re reality for me. I am, you know, I used to make the joke, you know, you'll never see me running. Or if you do, you better run because something's chasing me. <laughs> not, I'm not the gym guy. And it's funny because you post so much from a gym or you tag a gym when you're doing it because, you know, you want to give them pub or whatever. Everybody thinks you're all of a sudden this, this fitness gym guy. And I'm like, guys, look, the real story is I'm just like you. I'm the guy who doesn't want to go, who find, tries to find every excuse. And every day that I make it through those doors in the gym is a win because I have, yeah. I have continually established a habit. So, Yeah. To long story short, and again, you know me, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a storyteller and I, yeah. I over talk everything, but the truth of the matter is we're all on a journey and we're all trying to figure it out. And you do what works for you. You do what you can be consistent at. I just ask that you be intentional about it to make sure that it's healthy. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love that you use the real, when you get to the gym to help you, right? Once you walk through, you know, you're going to do it, right? You might not right. want to be there. Most people don't. And I'll be honest too especially in the, in the last couple of years, because I trained from home. So when you train from home, it's a little more challenging, right? When you go to a gym, you know, you've got to get it done because you let's say you've driven like 20 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever, right? Then you feel like the sunk cost fallacy of your time or your, or your gas. So mm -hmm. you're like, no, I have to get it done, right? But when you're at home, it's definitely more, cha I, I, I have my challenges, right? So, but I set it up in a way that everything's right there heavy bags. Uh, my dad just got me his speed bag when I was, you know, training for hand eye coordination. I got to get my buddy to help me set it up. Um, I got skipping ropes, uh, jump ropes, uh, treadmill, like everything's in there. So, and, but sometimes I, it's freezing in the garage. It's still pretty cold this time of year. So I'm like, so if it's freezing in the garage, I'll come inside and I'll just do a YouTube workout. Right. So, but my thing is that helps me stay consistent is it's got to be 20 to 30 minutes, like you're talking yeah. about, right? If yeah. I do, if I try and do more than that, because I got to get my warm up in, I got to get my cool down in, right? So really the, the whole, uh, the workout itself is only 20 minutes, but because I got to, because I'm getting older as well, I got to, I got to warm up, take my time and I got to cool down. Because if I don't do that, I wake up and I feel like I'm a hundred. <laughs> oh yeah. And, I, and I'll tell you one thing, uh, wearable tech. Yeah. Is yeah. Because I have I have my exercise goal set for daily at um, thirty minutes. I think yeah. it's I think that's the default that the Apple Watch has. Yeah. So, but I will always start when I walk into the gym. I'll hit functional strength training, 
I don't care that I'm on the treadmill or doing something else. This is going to be my timer. And I will start that timer and I will go through my routine. And if, if I'm off on my last machine and it's like at 24 minutes, I'll go find something else to do because I have committed to 30 minutes. If I go over 30, I think I really did great that day, right? You know, oh, yeah. what, you know over 30 minutes, you didn't realize that you got, you know, you scrolled TikTok for, for in between sets of, about a minute too long or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. the truth of the matter is we all need that form of measurement. We need some form of measurement or we'll, we'll never achieve a goal. We'll never complete a task. Yeah. You know, if, if I was left up to my own devices, walking, you know, walking in the gym doors would be enough. Oh, I made it. And I turned back around and go up, right? <laughs> I'm not, I can't leave myself to my own devices. I have to have a routine yeah. and a time yeah. that I need to do it. And and those two things have helped me stay relatively consistent. I, I go at least three days a week. On a good week, I'll go four. On a bad week, I'll go two. But yeah. it's always trying to average around that three days a week. Yeah. And that and that's what moves the needle too for making you feel the best, making your mind feel the best. And it helps you show up the, the best way, right? Because I know, I don't know about you, but it's probably similar as me, like when I don't get movement in, doesn't necessarily have to be weights, but if I don't get a, at least a bare minimum, a, like a walk, a half hour to an hour walk with the dog, and I don't get any, like that in, I'm like miserable. <laughs> Absolutely. My, my mindset is not the same. It's just like, boom, as soon as you get that movement in, it's like full 180. Yeah. Like, and, and, and getting back to what we talked about with, I, you know, who knew this was going to be a fitness oriented <laughs> cast today but so time of day there's some people that got to get it out of the way they hate it so much or they love it so much that they, they either really want to do it first thing in the morning or they have to do it first thing in the morning to get it knocked out of the way i'm not that person what i do because i work from home most of the time i need a break in the middle of the day i need that 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 change of environment to, to help my mindset because i'm putting out fires most mornings that that take a lot take a toll mentally on me well, then I can leave, you know, in that lunch hour time frame, maybe a little bit before, maybe a little after, depending on when everything shakes out. And I go do that workout. Well, you know, you're 15 minutes there, you're 30 minutes at the gym and 15 yeah. minutes home. That entire hour is almost like a reset for me. And then I'm able to tackle the afternoon. So for me, that's the beauty of of uh, of the gym as well is, is the mental reset. So, you know, maybe you do want to do it in the morning. Maybe you want to do it in the evening as you're cool down or you're your, your reset, you know, so you can give your best to your family, whatever works for you. And you can be consistent at, I think there's too many people out there that are looking for the next thing on their feed. That's going to move the needle for them. And, but they can't be consistent in the little things there. They, they, you know, it wasn't that this plan was bad. It's that you didn't stay consistent to that plan and you're not going to be consistent to the next plan. And you're going to say that plan's bad. Yeah. So, uh, Again, it's like toothpaste. What's the best toothpaste? It's the one you're going to use every day. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And excuse me, let's go back to, we were talking a little bit off camera about um, like how nowadays it is really changing how you're used to maybe one industry that you've done for a really long time, but that one industry's changed or it's completely done a 360 on its head. And you, your background in the newspaper industry and in marketing, yeah. right? Yeah. Now it's becoming newspaper is becoming more digital or it's got a hugely digital presence. People are always on their mobile devices, looking at news. Mm -hmm. They're on their tablet. They're on their laptop. They're people are rarely, unless, you know, depending on the area that you're in of the country, right? There'll, there'll be certain demographics that are still reading the newspaper, but most people are reading the newspaper digitally. So we were chatting a little bit about how one particular path in one area isn't all, isn't necessarily the way to go now, or it it's, it's evolved. So why don't you speak a little bit about that? Yeah. So, so let, let's, let's dive into that. Um, and I may go a little long here, but I, I think getting the whole picture is important. This is not just me rambling on as, as I sometimes do. Yes. So for 25 plus years of my life, I was a newspaper guy. That was who I was. That's what I did. That was my identity. And I was in a small town, so everybody saw me as the newspaper guy, which was a great thing. Newspapers in their heyday had a lot of impact. They had a lot of influence. They made a lot of money. You know, the, all the things. 
Well, life changes, you know, they, it could change in a moment or it may evolve over time. And as that particular industry has seen drastic change, and, and I recognized this probably in around 2011, 2012, you know, the, the fa Facebook really, when it started really ramping up in, in those years, where you could see that there was this erosion that was going on. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to be an innovator. I'm going to be the guy that that that's on the forefront. That's going to, you know, bring in the new this, the new that, or whatever. You know, I'm an early adopter kind of guy. So yes, well, you know, take that ten year period of time and nothing really improved. It, and then COVID hit, and it was just like, oh my gosh, it's like pull, pulling the rug out from underneath you. In 20, 2020, I turned fifty one. I'm 55 now, obviously. And I had to reach this point of what is my identity? Am I the newspaper guy? Because the newspaper guy is probably going to die off. And so I took a step back and started looking at what, what, what brings me joy? What am I good at? And, 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 you know, over the years, what, what are those skills that merged with what, what, what's needed in this world? And I began to, to uh, a word began to to emerge out of that. And you have to understand, uh, you know, uh, you know this, Alex, but the audience doesn't know. I've done everything from health coaching to business coaching, to speaking on stage, to uh, graphic design and video editing, you know, the entrepreneurial, solopreneur, all the skills required for that. I, I mean, I was in the Air Force. I was, you know, there's all of these things and I'm looking at them all like this. And, and if you're watching a video, you see me holding my hands up because it's like all of these things. What do they mean? <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm the newspaper yeah. guy, what does all this mean? You know, I mean, in newspaper, I was in sales. I was in writing. I was in, you know, photography. You know, you know, I was a leader in the community. I was, a, I was, a, I was, you know, the the guy who had, you know, volunteer addiction, meaning, you know, if you asked me to help on something, you know, next thing I knew I was on the board and then I was the chair of the board, blah, blah, blah. What does all mean? One word emerged, impact. My desire for my entire life, although I never could codify it to one word until about three years ago, was impact. I want to be able to impact somebody else's life. And in the newspaper business, it was impacting people by informing them, you know, yeah, think about it. Little Johnny hits a home run for the for for the baseball team, and it ends up in the paper, and that that impacts him in such a way. Maybe a a college scout sees the paper article. Yeah, everything was geared to impact. I was a health coach because I wanted so people to go from from you know a place of unhealthy to a place of healthy, or a place of not sick to a place of healthy. There's a whole other thing there. You know, I'm doing career coaching because I want to see people navigate and not make the same mistakes I made in in career or in business. I uh, I do podcasts because I'm wanting to add value and I want to bring people with a different mindset and a different point of view to help give tools to people. It all came back down to the word impact. So I, I, I told you this off camera. I said, I, I consider my, my life a portfolio life. And that, that's a title of a book that, that, that maybe your audience would want to read. And the key was, if it, if it, if it aligns up with what you're wanting to align up with, the various fingers of it or the various lanes of it don't really matter. You can have multiple lanes. We talk about in the entrepreneurial world, you must have multiple streams of income. You know, most of them think it's like, oh yeah, I go make money at a job. I got a side hustle over here. I go throw that money over into real estate and that's my multiple streams. No, no, no. You take what you have, your God-given gifts, your God-given talents, the, your, your influence, and you you align that with what your mission is. Again, my mission is impact. And you utilize all of those. I mean, you know, you and I have a mutual friend in Omar Medrano. You know, he and I are, are working together to help impact people in his circle. You know, the people who are in the what I call the what if it did work world, you know, that, that followed him based on his book. You know, we're we're building out courses and we're why? Because we want to have impact. You and I, uh, you know, we, we had a we had a a, a uh, task before you got married, we were, we were trying to work on building out, you know, helping podcasters get their podcasts in front of more ears and eyes, and then, you know, turning that into monetization at some point. But it gets back to the same word. We were trying to impact those folks for the good. Yeah. So yeah. 
I believe that as you go through this life, you cannot derive your identity from a single vocation. And we guys are habitual about doing that. You know, what's the first question you ask somebody when you meet them at a networking event? Or whatever? Oh, hey, I'm David. What? Hey, I'm Alex. Oh, hey, Alex, what do you do? <laughs> it's hard to, for the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for the last several months up here in Tennessee where people don't know me, I would always stumble in that sentence. And I'm like, oh, man. So now I've grown to the place where it's like, well, I'm an entrepreneur who owns several businesses aimed at making impact in people's lives. Oh, wow. Great. Really? There you go. Yeah. You know, my most recent one, my, my wife, had, again, I'm sorry for rambling. You can edit this out if you want to. But my wife got into helping senior citizens who need in-home care, non-medical, okay? And we have a lot of people in memory care with memory care issues, Alzheimer's, dementia. I saw her step into her purpose in this caregiving role. And then she is elevated to the the head of caregiving for this this relatively new company in Middle Tennessee. And then I shot my mouth off and said, you guys need more clients and I know how to get clients. And they're like, oh, really? Well, then why don't you come and be our biz dev person? And so I've added biz dev for seniors helping seniors to my repertoire of all the things, you know, another finger up, you know, and so, but it gets back to impact. Well, why, why would you do that, David? Why would you take on another thing? Because of impact. I don't want to, I don't want to leave this world the way I found it. I want to be a world changer. And sometimes, most of the time, it's not about changing the whole world. It's changing somebody's world. I love that. And that is what makes it all worth doing. If God's given me all of these talents, and it's like, you know, I I feel like a jack of all trades and a master of none sometimes. But if God's going to give me all these talents and have me enjoy utilizing those talents, then why would I not utilize those things to make an impact in somebody else's life? And, you know, the 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 money part of it you know i wish i could tell you that i'm making money hand over fist with all these things i'm not i believe that the breakthrough will take place because i think if you pour enough good into the world the world will reciprocate that good back to you yeah and i we've all been through challenges over the last year to two years i mean for crying out loud my health coaching business took a nosedive because oh we approved ozempic and other shots to help people lose weight and it's like that's not yeah. Yeah. And yeah. anybody who's read this, the, the studies, yeah. but again, if somebody's desperate enough, they'll do nearly anything. And, and we all want the quick fix. We all want to push the, but I mean, think about this and you're going to laugh. You know, we talk about microwaves, you know, you know, it's a crock pot world, but we want a microwave to success. We're so lazy now. We don't even want to hit 30 seconds on the microwave. We want to hit the start button and have the 30 seconds automatically come up. My microwave does that. <laughs> Think about that for a minute. We are so shortcut oriented yeah. that, the, that the company that made the microwave realizes, you know, they don't want to push 30 seconds and start. Let's just let them hit start <laughs> and they'll get their 30 seconds. So, we've, got, we've gotten even lazier. Yeah. Yeah. So, so recognizing that. So you say, well, David, then are you still a health coach? Absolutely. I'm a health coach. I'm looking for the people who are looking for me. And if they're like, hey, Dave, you know, I want, I'm 50 something years old and I want to lose weight. And I know you lost weight, at, you know, right when you turned 50. Can you help me? I'm right here for you. But if you're like, hey, man, I heard you lost it in six months. I want to lose it in three. Do you think we can do this? No, not your, I'm not your guy. Yeah. And, wow. and what I've found is it's mostly up here. Physical challenges are often a reflection of mental struggles. And until yeah. you start changing your mindset, and I'm no neurologist, I'm no psychologist, I'm I'm just a guy who has seen how his mindset has really either catapulted him forward or really held him back. And I'm I just I see I see tendencies. I'm able to take that step back and look at somebody's situation and say, Have you looked thought about looking at it from this angle? And by doing that, we're able to make some impact in people's lives. Right on. Yeah. And um yeah, because I like that's the biggest. That's always been my biggest hurdle. The physical side was easier because I grew up like my dad. Like he was an he was an ex athlete. 
um, like hockey, lacrosse, box lacrosse. Uh, and then he got me and then he's like, he's like, he's like, I was like eight years old. And I was like, you know, we we're in the backyard. He's like, son, he's like, you got to stay active. We're going to put you in something. So what do you want to, when do you want to try? And I'm like, well, um, let's, let's do soccer. Cause I see people playing soccer and it looks like a lot of fun. And I, and I, at the time, I, even in the back, in the backyard, he could see me running around. He's like, let's put you in soccer. Yeah. Cause I love to run. So he put me in soccer and then, cause you know, lacrosse was close to his heart cause he used to play. I'm like, yeah, dad, I want to try lacrosse. So then he got me in that. So I was playing those like, you know, different times of the seat, different seasons, right. Soccer in the fall, lacrosse in the spring. And uh, yeah, like I learned like, um, how important movement is from a really young age um, and mindset I had to play a little catch up on. I, I learned from my, from my parents, like how to develop a great mindset, but I, I had to take it more of the rest of the way. I had to do some introspection. I had to read some books to like, now I feel like my mind's in a really good place, but then like in high school, middle school, elementary, mm -hmm. right. You're, you're, you're still learning, right. Your mind's evolving. And, uh, you need that. Sometimes you, like you said, you need those different varying perspectives to really hone in your mindset because yes. sometimes, you know, when you're young, like your, your mindset's a little muddled, it's a little all over the place. And to help recenter yourself, you need to hear that, you know, that one person say something a little bit differently. And then you're like, boom, aha. I'm like, Oh my God, I was looking at everything. Totally and, the wrong way. <laughs> and it may be the same thing that you've heard over and over again. It's just a different voice. And somehow yeah. you'll listen to that voice first. I, I was on a live earlier this week with somebody and they made this profound statement. He said, and it just stuck with me. And and, and again, it's, it's it may be a, a, an age thing with me. Again, 55 is kind of, it's not hitting me hard, but it's like one of those, I don't know. It's just one of those things where you're like, oh, I'm 55. Um, but they said this, they said, at some point in everybody's life, they enter the wisdom phase. And in the wisdom phase, they actually start doing all the things their parents told them to do, and they refuse to do. And they begin to understand the why behind why they were telling them to do it. And I think about that with regard to the relationship with my own father, and how I, I realized i am not become him. But a lot of the things he told me, I'm now teaching to somebody else. You're like Somebody will say, well, where'd you hear that? And I'm like, well, I heard it from my dad. And they're like, wow, my dad never said anything like that. Well, your dad said something that, that will profoundly impact your life. You know, I told somebody the other day, I said, don't let your mad get your money. And they're like, do what? I said, don't make a decision now in the reaction that will hurt you long term. Don't let your mad get your money. And they're like, I've never heard that before. And like, well, I said, my dad used to tell me that all the time. <laughs> so you do pass into that phase at some point. It may be mental maturity where you're actually able to, to incorporate wisdom because you've gone through enough experiences to realize, oh, what they were saying is true. And now I can incorporate that. And But as much as we want to shield the generation following us from the stupidity that we did, Sometimes they just got to experience their own stupidity to get that wisdom that you possess today. Yeah, that's exactly right. You got to go, you got to be able to go through it, uh, whatever challenges and trials and tribulations on your own. And then you'll start to see the pattern and be like, oh, I got to, I got to kind of change. It, it, it's direction. like in the, it's like in the physical, you don't develop immunity if you never get sick. Yeah. And yet, if we shield ourselves from ever getting sick, we never develop the ability to keep from getting sick. And the same is true in our mindset. If we, if we try to shield ourselves from the negative, uh, painful experiences in life, we'll never develop the strength to go through painful experiences in life. Um, I, 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 for sports fans, I, I love, you know, right now, and again, I don't know when this is going to air, but right now we're in the middle of March Madness. You know, the Final Four is taking place this weekend. We just came off the Super Bowl, you know, a month or so ago. And when they reach that pinnacle, when, when they get to hoist the trophy and they stick the microphone in the face of the coach, the players, or whatever, there is a universal thing that's said by the winners. This team went through a lot of adversity this year and we overcame it. A life without adversity will be a life without championships. 
Yeah. And so begin to understand that adversity is part of it and look for the lessons in the adversity. No matter, and again, I know there's some tragedies that happen. I'm not, I'm not diminishing anything anybody has gone through, is going through, or will go through. I'm just saying there's always something that can be learned and some good that can come out of getting through those things. Yeah, absolutely. And like embrace learning to embrace adversity and to even sit in it uh, while you're in it and just like acknowledge it. And, and, and you can question. I mean, I've been in I've been in some major questioning phases, especially as of late, simply because I physically moved to another state most of my life. And a lot of my days are spent dealing with things from where I moved from. And I'm like, Lord, why am I here when everything's going on back there and it's taking my attention from here and nothing's growing here just yet. But, you know, two years into this, I'm starting to see the embers glowing of what's going to take place here. Some key relationships that would have never taken place, some opportunities, you know, to be in rooms that would have never happened there. Yeah. Yeah. And so I say all that to, to say, wherever you are in life's journey, if you're in the worst of the worst, know that, that there's good coming out of it. If you're in the best of the best, guess what? You're also going to have a worst of the worst. I mean, it's just the way life is. Um, yeah. This too shall pass. Whatever it is, this too shall pass. So my dad always says, everything in life is temporary except death and taxes. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of which, I was doing my taxes before we uh, got. <laughs> so I'm feeling you right now, my brother. <laughs> I, I, I gotta, I gotta, we actually gotta get ours done today because <laughs> it's it's due. Yeah, end of April. I don't know how it is in the U.S. If it's it's probably the same, right? End of April is it? April. Oh 15th. no, I got yeah. a week. I've only got a week left, and I'm sitting there. Going, uh, where's, yeah. all, where's all my mileage records? Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. gonna bail me out. You know. Yeah. yeah. So. Well, yeah, pleasure to have you on the Mindset Podcast again, David. And uh, this was a, a very uh, awesome, candid conversation again. And uh, looking forward to having you on again. And Absolutely. Uh, where are you most active on right now for socials? And where can our listeners connect with you? So a couple of things, and I'll make it really quick. Um, number one, you can find me on all the platforms. Everything from you know Facebook, TikTok, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn. I'm, I've actually got a blog on LinkedIn that, I, that, I, that I've started called Keep This In Mind. Um, you can go to davidaspec.com to find all the, the links, of course, the podcast, the Keep This In Mind podcast. Um, my book is available on Amazon, but I, I've got a very special thing for your for your listeners. If you go to davidaspec.com slash O-D-N-T dash signed, O-D-N-T, Old Dog New Tricks dash signed, Ooh. and you buy it through that site, I will personalize and you'll be actually buying it from me, not Amazon, and I will sign your copy and put it in the mail to you. Fourteen ninety five. That's the same price you'd pay on Amazon, and you get a signed copy. So when I, so when it's you know worth a whole lot, and you can auction it off on eBay, then you'll have a signed copy you can auction off on eBay. But again, I want to give that to the to the to the listeners and the viewers because I believe that we all have a story to tell, and I believe that our story can impact others. And if if my story resonates with you, I encourage you to grab a copy of the book for sure because I think the transparency that I have in that book. Will will help you get through whatever leadership journey you're going through. Absolutely, pleasure to have you on the show, David, and uh, looking forward to staying connected again.